you've got what about 18 odd investments uh, in India at this point in time, a couple of unicorns as well. Uh, what is the data telling you? What are the bets that you're likely to make? And I believe a new fund as well on the anvil? That's right. Well, we, we launched Rocket Ship Fund 3, uh, like I think a few months ago. Um, and uh, in, in terms of India, we, we continue to be super bullish and excited about India. Um, you know, every big space and, you know, country goes through a little bit of ups, ups and downs. Uh, you know, India as a country is doing incredibly well. The Indian economy is, is on a road. It's one of the few bright spots in the, in the world right now. Uh, the Indian um, technology space is exciting as well. There's a little bit of consolidation that's happening in the space. Which happens periodically, um, you know, and it's it's healthy for the for the ecosystem. Uh, but at the same time, I'm really really bullish uh, about uh, Indian entrepreneurs who can adopt AI mm -hmm. and use it to digitally transform uh, huge swaths of Indian industry. And we are we are looking for companies like that uh, all the time, right? So, so, which are the spaces that you think that this has the potential to have that kind of transformative impact? So, finance is obviously one, and uh, the in the uh, you know uh, there's. Uh, we, we had the first generation of fintechs in India. I think we can have a second generation that's more AI-driven, uh, more technology-driven. That can be uh, super interesting. Uh, food uh, is another. I just mentioned about the uh, the, the food tech company. Uh, agriculture mm. is, I think, uh, is a space that I think can really uh, be, uh, you know, transformed by the by the adoption of AI uh, and education, which has traditionally been a good, uh, you know, a, a great vertical in India. I think that we, we will see the next generation of uh, companies in that. Uh, mm. in that space. When we were last speaking in 2016, you were talking about irrational exuberance and what that had done to valuations and how easy money had kept zombie companies afloat. Are you now starting to see, uh, are we in the middle of the correction? Are we heading towards the end of the correction? How do you see things? No, I think we are we're very much in the middle of the correction right now. I think basically what happened is a lot of companies, uh, when, when the easy money was around, raised uh, large amounts of, of funding. Uh, so there were, the, the companies that did not raise large amounts of funding went out of business quickly. The companies that raised large amounts of funding have long runways. Um, and so they, so they have not gone out of business. They, they may have done some layoffs, but they still have really long runways. But there are still many companies among those the, whose business has not really taken off, even though they have long runways and they've raised large amounts of capital. And this is true in the U.S. and it's true in India, right? It's, it's true everywhere. Uh, so we have... Um, a bunch of companies uh, that have a lot of capital but are in no danger of going out of business right now because you know they really have a long run base and uh, that is uh, these are the zombie companies that we spoke about last time well we have the zombies back again now uh, that are hanging around um, and i think uh, it'll take a couple of years for the, for those zombies to get washed out what we saw happen was also that people were willing to put a lot of money behind what was quote unquote a concept without necessarily having a strong business model in play and now the expectation is where is the the, the business model where is profitability i mean this even on the investor path the pendulum swings doesn't you know, it? It, it it always does and it always overcorrects i think i i think i worry that we might also overcorrect and go uh, too far in the other extreme because when you have a startup uh, you know you very often you have to bet on a dream um, right, um, and you, and if you sort of impose a business model and profitability constraints right at the beginning, you you know you're going to miss many exciting companies uh, just because you know they, they don't have that. I mean, the, very often there there is a you know startups very often have this J curve phenomenon where they lose money initially for a lot lot of time and then they have hockey stick up. That's you know uh, so if you sort of focus too far on the right hand side and say you know right from day one you have to be uh, a profitable company, you're going to miss companies with with uh, with a steeper J curve, which ultimately and might end up being the, the more important and transformative companies. How, how are you reading what's happening as far as the legacy tech companies are concerned? As one of the initial investors into companies like Facebook, etc., how do you read what's going on at a company like Meta, what's now happening at Twitter with Musk coming in, what's happening with AI and Google? Uh, you know, where do you see the incumbents over the next few years? You know, I think this, to be honest, this is a great time to be an incumbent. 
because of the uh, because of AI and the and the new developments uh, around AI, um, you know, it was a bad time for incumbents for the last couple of years because there was a lot of regulation coming at them. There was a lot of re, you know le regulatory uh, pressure on them, which which will continue to be the case. There, there is a lot of regulatory pressure on the. There will be a lot of regulatory pressure on incumbents going forward. But the emergence of large language models and uh, sort of uh, the the adoption of those and the more importance of those is going to be. Um, actually beneficial to incumbents because, as I said, developing these models and being a player in that space requires a lot of capital. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one thing that incumbents have is a lot of capital mm. uh, and a lot of expertise, right? So uh, because of that, they, this is uh, it's going to lock in the advantages of incumbents to some extent over the next uh, next few years. There have been hearings in Congress yeah. uh, with the open, with Sam Altman, uh, okay. the Open AI CEO, going and testifying, saying maybe the government should uh, regulate mm. AI. Now, that's an interesting thing to think about. Clearly, you need to some safeguards like provide you know uh, weapon systems and mm. so on that mm. that you don't want ai to to be able to access but at the same time regulating too early mm. uh, always has the danger of benefiting the incumbents more mm. because in a, a regulation always mm. favors incumbents mm. because regulation imposes costs so you costs. think that's what the this whole business of writing letters or in to Congress saying that come in and regulate, you think this is a, a way of self-protection? Absolutely. I mean, so think about it, right? I mean, there, there is this old, uh, you know, uh, parable uh, uh, that says, you know, who benefits, you know, you, uh, from prohibition? The people who, you know, benefit most from prohibition are the bootleggers at some level, right? So, it's, uh, you know, because they, they, their business kind of goes up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at some level, whenever the, there is regulation, the government is going to turn to these incumbents to help write the rules, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to solidify their uh, their own position by writing rules that are favorable to themselves and erecting barriers to prevent new entrants from, uh, from coming in, right? Regulation always favors incumbents because the agencies that are regulated, uh, there's this phenomenon called regulatory capture, yeah. where the... the, the Do you the, fear that we're uh, we're likely to see regulatory capture spe specifically when it comes to AI because in fact there was an interesting piece out saying look keep the tech CEOs away from regulation and this notion or narrative that is being generated or created uh, is that governments don't understand AI don't understand the technology and so it's best to leave the regulation with the experts ie the tech companies themselves yeah, no, I look, I, I worry about that, and I think the reason for that is exactly this. You don't want the incumbents writing the rules because they, then the rules are going to favor the, uh, favor the incumbents. Uh, now, I think the, the incumbents always already have a lot of natural advantages in the space. You don't want to erect further barriers to prevent uh, startups from, uh, from entering the space and playing in the space. So, uh, so my personal belief is that the government should regulate new technologies like, like AI with a very light hand, mm. uh, maybe put, you know, very uh, general limits like, you know, don't access to weapon, weapon systems, systems think, things, things of this nature, right? Uh, but but let, let it evolve, right? And let, let it play out. And for a country like India as well, it's, I think it'll be in India's interest, for example, if there is less regulation around AI in the U.S. Uh, or, or anywhere in the world, right? Because your regulation in the, in the uh, regulation of uh, AI will lead to exports bans and things of this nature, which you don't want at this at this stage for for a country like India to take advantage of this technology. Mm. Anand, so let me end then by asking you, you know, uh, the thing that excites you most about India as well as the U.S. and this U.S.-India startup corridor uh, that has, of course, uh, now been in operation for a few years now and this partnership that hopefully will deepen, especially in emerging and critical technologies on the back of both governments coming together. What excites you the most? What excites me the most is India's uh, deep uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. I'm seeing these amazing entrepreneurs in India. When I, when I visit India, I talk to the entrepreneurs. Uh, they, it's, 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 it's great to see their ambition. It's great to see the, the depth of talent uh, and how that has changed to you over the last 10 years. The, uh, the U.S. Uh, India partnership is amazing for that because, because we have a great Indian diaspora here in Silicon Valley and all over the U.S. who are ready to invest uh, in India um, and who are ready to help take Indian companies who develop very interesting technologies and help the market 
those technologies in the U.S. as well. Because while India is a great place to develop, sometimes it's the bigger markets are sometimes in the How U.S. How many of right? your portfolio companies have uh, have made that leap from servicing India to now servicing the global markets? How many are on the cusp of being able to do that? No, it's, it's, it's actually a very difficult transition to make. A couple of our companies have made that uh, transition. For example, this company that I told you uh, that is in the AI meat food space. They started in India, mm. uh, in, in, in Bombay, um, and now they they moved to uh, moved to the U.S., right? So, uh, so I think that transition has to happen as well to address larger market opportunities. So I think there are big market opportunities within India. Uh, that you you can address by just being in India, right? Uh, things things in e-commerce, for example, or in agriculture. There are many, there are many interesting opportunities where you can uh, or supply chain where you can be in India and build a build a big company. Um, but if you're building a company that is selling to enterprises, uh, you know, then the bigger uh, opportunities are uh, in in the U.S. Well, uh, Anand, it's always a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us here once again on Young Turks. We wish you very best of luck with Rocket Ship and, of course, with the San Francisco Unicorns. Uh, uh, and, and we look forward to being able to speak with you again soon. Thank you, Shireen. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, that's it then on this special edition of Young Turks. From all of us here on the team, we will continue to bring you more stories from Silicon Valley. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching.